In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the Spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. Welcome back to Revival Radio TV. Welcome back, Roberts. Thank you for being here. All right, this is a topic I really enjoyed. We kind of touched on it probably a couple of years ago now. And, uh, it's been that long? I, it's been a while. Wow. So I want, us, I want us to kind of dive into this again because it's so huge in the body of Christ especially. And I think all of us need to understand the difference between a calling and a mantle. Okay. So... Okay, go Take ahead. Take off. I'll take. Oh, a mantle is an all-inclusive thing. So you're asking about a calling. A mantle would have a calling, an equipment, a gifting, a strategy, all of it inside for that particular thing that God wants to do in that cloak. Uh, if we're talking about a calling, it's an individual thing. It may not be as, as powerful as the others are, uh, but it's a part of a mantle. And so it's not all-inclusive like a mantle is. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So, so can, you, can, can, you, can you give us a, an example of each? Well, you can have a calling to feed people or a calling to, um, okay. to build a church. Right. And that can be a part of a mantle. A mantle will have a, a, a call. Like the healing mantle I talk about in the, right. with Edder, McPherson, Kuhlman, Benning. That healing mantle is a healing dominating force in the earth. Everyone that carries it has the same type of calling to carry the healing demonstrating power to that generation. Got it. So, and in there comes special graces, giftings, equipments. All that stuff goes into that cloak. Where if you're just talking about a calling, or it has a, a singular calling, it's not the whole inclusive thing, if that makes sense. So that's, that's part of it. A mantle is a, a, a cloak, actually speaking, made of threads. So one thread is the giftings, one thread is the anointing, one thread is the impartation part that comes and makes all that together. And it comes upon you. Some people have an anointing from, like for example, I do not carry anything of Kenneth Hagin in a mantle. I don't have any. I've sat under him long enough to have an anointing, maybe one. I'm very precious that I've got. And I can feel it come out of me sometimes. That anointing is not a Kenneth Hagin mantle. It's an anointing I picked up by being in his meetings for years, sitting in the sure. crowd. I met him a few times. I wasn't close, close to him. I had breakfast or lunch with him a few times. That was it. What I got was sitting. I got an anointing in the room that came upon and went in and became a part of my life. That is not the Kenneth Hagin mantle. So people assume because they have an anointing like that from somebody, they have the mantle. And that's not the same thing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And Good so job. There are tons of people that have anointings from different ministers and I say, get them all you can get. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have the mantle of that thing. So that... Uh, that's how I'd explain the difference. So let's talk about, uh, let me just pick somebody and you can kind of tell me where it went and we're, we're, we're being nice if to I, everybody. If, I know. <laughs> if you know. All right, let's talk about Amy Simple McPherson. Okay. I mean, she was quite, quite. She a, was the greatest Pentecostal preacher we've ever had. I mean, I love all the guys, but this divorced woman did well and did outdid well. them all. So uh, even in Miracle Power, I mean, the lady had it all. She built the four square denomination because the Assemblies of God would not accept her, her churches because she was a divorced woman. Yeah. And that's why she had to separate. So I want people to understand how much behind the scenes drama she had to overcome too. Obviously God did not penalize her for the mistakes in her marriages. Uh, so for if you're divorced, God will give you a second chance. So please take it and give it to the folks who will let you have a second chance. That, uh, so we know that, that is a massive thing you just said. And that's good. That's good because if you are divorced, your life is not over. Now, it's not, I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's not as looked as much as a scarlet letter we anymore. We process it a lot better nowadays. We do process. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Process it better. But that does not mean you're disqualified. So, yeah, please continue. Now, like if some groups you can never preach, but not with God. Not with God. So you may have to find another group. And that's okay. And that's all right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I would encourage them all to do it because there are a lot of divorced preachers that need to be back in the pulpit to help our country at this time. Amen. Preach it. So, um, so she went through all of that and she overcame those things. The biggest challenge in, in Amy's life was her succession plan. She had two children. 
one from Robert Simple, the daughter, Roberta, her second husband, Harold had Rolf, and she only had two children. And so the daughter was the one that had the pulpiteer gift, the origin right. gift, like her mother. When I talked with her on the phone, you could hear it. Even her just talking to you, you could hear that. I thought, oh, please preach. But she, to tell the story, she grew up in the ministry, loved Jesus all of her life, but could not handle the politics and the bickering and the biting and all the stuff that was going on around this famous woman preacher in the church and ministry, okay? So it got into the family between Amy and her mother. They both were right and they both were wrong. And, uh, but the, the daughter just could not handle it. So she left the ministry, left California, and went as far as she could to New York City. She married a, a Jewish man, served the Lord. They bought a, an apartment complex building and lived in it, and that's how they made a living. She tithed every month to Angela's Temple her whole life, but would not preach ever. She made like two return trips for anniversaries for the church and would give a little speech, but she would never preach again. So Amy lost the vocal oracle gift of her mantle right. that was to come. Amy knew how it was going to fall out. And um, <coughs> she recognized when her daughter Roberta left and never returned that it was over. So the only one left of the original plan of God that she felt was her son, Rolf. And she said to Rolf, he told me this, because I asked him about it, because I knew Rolf at the end of his life. I said, how did mom, your mom prepare you for this? She first told me what I was not to do. Interesting. She says, you're not a preacher. You're not an oracle gift. You're an administrator. That's where God put your giftings. Your sister was this. And this did not work out. So you still have to obey God according to your gifting and your part of the mantle that you're to carry. And, and she taught him what he was and was not first, and then taught him how to operate in that side. She told him, though, well, you can get up and speak some, you can get up and preach, but that's not where your strengths are. You are to organize it and to keep it run efficiently and right and keep it growing. And uh, since your sister will not do this, find men and women who have that gift in our organization, and she helped identify some, and put them up and let them do that, and it'll grow. Rolf did exactly what his mom told him. Wow. When she died, he never tried to be the head pulpiteer. He would do some preaching and teaching and things like that, but that wasn't his gift. He was an administrator, and he put other people forward. So the denomination, after the great founder died, when it survived the first few years of her absence, it began to kick in and grow, and it still became one of the largest full gospel denominations in the world, especially overseas, because of his gift, and he stayed where it was to be. So you had a mantle with a hiccup in it. God's original plan in that family, which was very rare to have both children in the actual line of to succeed her, because that's very rare for that to be. And But we had a daughter who said no, and she loved Jesus. She went to him when she died, uh, she would only talk to me once or twice on the phone because she thought I wasn't write everything she said down, which I did. And so, <laughs> so you know, I don't talk to Roberta Simba and not record what she sure. said. So she would never let me see her in person, but she let my mom go see her. So like my mom's not going to tell me, so she records and brings it all back for me and stuff. But she loved Jesus. I said, Mom, see, is she really in love with God like she was when she was a little girl? She goes, she was passionate about the Lord, loved it, loved it. what her mom did, was not angry, but she kept saying, I could not live with all of this uh, politics, drama, competition, because it got to me so bad that it made me begin to hate things, dislike wow. stuff. Yeah. And she removed herself. And look at she might have made the right decision for her soul, right. but did not know how to get back to that. Or maybe she went too far. I, I would have loved for her to at least preach sometimes, but she didn't do it at all. So that's that kind of mantle with a hiccup in it, in, in Amy's life. And so um, the four square is still doing great. Yeah. There'll never be another Amy. Thank God we had her close to our lifetime where we could still feel the effects of her life. Yeah, it's good. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> let's pick uh, let's talk about um, Mother Edder. Mother Edder. She she started what I call the Great Healing Mantle in America. Now that's my words. Other historians may want to name it something different, and I'm okay with that. But this healing mantle that we see that rests on Benny at this moment. He, he's the last carrier of it. Started with Maria Woodworth Edder, came to Amy McPherson, to Catherine Kuhlman, to, and to Benny. That's the way that thing lined up. 
And uh, so it began uh, with her trying to be a farmer. Her and her husband want to be farmers. It's amazing how we do stupid stuff. And so they try to be farmers and weren't good farmers. And the sad time, thing about that time, all their kids died but one, one daughter. So she had five children. So she makes a comment, which I don't like the comment, but she made it that she felt like because she didn't obey, that, that's why God killed her kids kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that concept. And um, so she finally said to her husband, they were making it. Which, you know, let's, let's, <clears throat> don't, let's don't go to buy it, pass that too quickly. Because with, at that time and in that era, <clears throat> that's what they thought. That part of Revelation was where they're, that's where, that's where they well, were When you at. read history and you read the sermons of these people that we dearly love, yeah. they will say things that we know better today about because right. exactly. we were taught. And so you'll hear her say stuff like that. Yeah. And you'll hear Lake, you'll hear, Wiggles, you'll hear people say, oh, because they didn't live in the time of our revelation. They were behind us. So we have progressed, especially right. because of the Word of Faith movement. Sure. We've learned so much during that era. Right. Wow. So you have to read it, understand. When I tell a story, you have to sometimes explain the, the culture of the day, the understanding of where they were at in the overall Christian faith belief system. Yeah. You know, Charles Spurgeon did not know about the Holy Spirit and the tongues and the gifts. But he was a great orator. He was a mighty, mighty anointed man of God. But we hear him talk, he leaves things out. It wasn't there. They, they didn't have it. And so you have to enjoy where they're at and not criticize them or throw them out because they don't have this revelation. One of the problems with charismatics, if you don't speak in tongues and have visions, they, they don't want to read your book. Please stop that and read some of these people's books because they are great, uh, so good. great books. Like Spurgeon's stuff is wonderful. Yeah. Wesley and all these guys. All right, but now, since you... You kind of went down the the legacy of uh, Maria Woodworth Eder, and you got to Benny. Now Benny did not know. Uh, he didn't know uh, Catherine Kuhlman. You think he would though? He talks about her, but he didn't. Yeah, he did not know I, her. I think he sang in the choir and saw her. And saw her. I actually talked to her, so I'm closer to her than he was. That was yeah. my joke between him and I. Yeah. So I, why did you get the medal, not me? So so explain that because I mean we I think we typically think. Well, the family members around them the most, so that's why it goes there. Illogically, that's what would make sense. But, now, but now you've got somebody that's so not, not really connected, yet like you said, you see that on him. There's always exceptions to every rule we make. Right. You know, you, like, you know, there's going to be somebody. Benny was one of those, because all of them with Edder, McPherson actually met Edder and had it some time with her in her older age. Actually, Rolf told me when, we, when she met her, she was not impressed. I mean, she loved her and excited, but there was nothing that impressed Amy about the presence or the ministry that night of Mother Edder, which was interesting. Like, that is interesting. And then one time, uh, Edder's people was at a place where Amy was preaching, and they asked Mother Edder, you know, would you want to go hear Amy? She goes, oh, she's too dramatic. And I'm like, and you're not? I mean, it's, just, it's like, please. You can yeah. her. But it, it just showed personalities and, and yeah. stuff, which I thought was funny. But that anointing came on Amy, and she doubled it. That, that, there's an aspect. When you see what was on Edder and hit Amy, it went to another level. And uh, then it came to Catherine. Catherine actually went to Amy's Bible school for like a half a semester and dropped out. She went out there um, to California when she was married to Burroughs Waltrip, and it was the mistake of her life. Right. And she discovered the ending of that marriage out there. She was trying everything she could to make that thing work, and it did not work. And so uh, she actually, there's a story she tells, you have to hunt for it, but she tells, she goes to Amy's grave. And if you know how Amy's grave is said, there's you know, the big thing here, and then there's a lot of little benches on the sides of it. She's on this side. And an old Latino Mexican grandmother is bringing her granddaughter up the little slope to, mm -hmm. to the grave. And she sits over here, and you can hear what each other is saying there. On the, and Catherine is praying and listening, and the grandmother says, I wanted to bring you here today to, sh to introduce you to the woman that gave me our faith. This is why you go to church. This is why your mama goes to church, because I go to church, because she came to my town and told me about Jesus. And uh, Catherine was crying. And she prayed the little prayer, I hope before I die, somebody could say that about me. So it shows the desperate place she was at at that right, moment in her life. Right. She, she lost her reputation. She lost invitation. Her marriage was yeah, ending. Yeah, things had dried up. It, it was over. It was yeah. over. She had nothing. And that was the moment a few weeks later, she walks to a dead end street in California and dies. A great death thing she talks about. Yeah. And the mantle that was on Amy that fell on her. 
it came to her at the worst time of her life, which I think is a shock. Yeah. Why would you give this thing, this right. wonderful, outstanding nation attention getting thing, on a woman at the worst time of her life walking out of a marriage? Because I think he saw her heart and she was very sincere and she was very sad and she was very sorry and she had messed up so bad. And she told Jesus, I don't have anything. All I have is I love you. If you can use me, please. And in that moment, that's when she got it. But it took her 10 years to figure out what it was. It took her 10 years to walk out of the, of the hurt, the emotion, and the church trauma that she had to walk through because of her divorce for that thing to start operating. When it started operating. So it, it was 10 years from that time. From that time, about 10 years. It took 10 years and her coming back into ministry. You know, people don't realize what she went through those eight to 10 years. Uh, the church almost killed Miss Kuhlman because of being divorced. They did not know how to give a person that has made that type of mistake a second chance. And so Catherine had enough to turn in to keep going because she loved Jesus. That, that was it. And she kept going. And finally, the power started in a service without anybody being touched while she was talking. It began to hit the room. And she was more shocked because I think she thought at that time, her oracle preaching was the main thing God gave her. She did not know about the, the, the power that was coming. So she was just happy to be, still be a preacher that I could talk about you. I could invite you to come to the Lord. So that's many of what she did. She did not have a lot of miracles. She had some, but nothing major. But when that thing hit up in, um, in uh, Pennsylvania, and it grew, and it came like a force. So that's a problem when you, when you get a mantle. You have to have the character and the mentality and the right structure. So when that thing hits, it is an overwhelming nation demanding attention, right. confrontational force of God that comes through a person and hits a whole country. And, and see, there may be regional mantles, but I'm talking about national ones. Sure. But that's what that heating mantle that came from Edder, first to Kuhn, to Benny, that's what that thing is. When that came on Catherine, she dropped every desire to ever build a church to get married again, to do anything. She gave her whole life to protect her second chance and to cooperate with that gift that God gave her. And that's why it was so powerful. And she kept it like that. Her attitude toward it, her way of talking about it, the way she would not pray for you until after you were healed because I want you to know I did not heal you. She worked, I mean, intentionally to keep herself behind that thing and not in front of it. And it may be easier for women than for men to do that because of the, the dispositions of our right. egos and our sure. positions in society. Women have that helpmate where men are more the, the take charge. And that's why there's a little difference, uh, I think, sometimes in the way they carry it. But that thing was powerful. And um, with Benny, when he came along, um, I've talked to him several times about it. And sometimes he talks about it really deep. And sometimes he, does, he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, and none of them talked about it, to be honest with you. When you read their story, none of them talked about it. I'm the guy that talks about it. I'm the guy <laughs> right. that writes about it, and I'm over here. And I think I'm right on, yes. on what I'm saying, yeah. that there's, there's something here than just individual ministries. Now, the reason why I begin to look at it, one, what are the similarities? Number one, naturally speaking, they all wore white when they preached, which is a natural coincidence or a choice. But even being in his white suit, all the more white. Amy's servant outfit was white. Edder wore white. So there's a white aspect to it. I don't think it's a requirement. I think it's just one of those things. But they all had dominant healing ministries that took national attention. And, um, and they dominated the whole time they were there. They dominated. I mean, Edder, you can find her newspaper articles all through the newspapers in America. And they described the meetings like... Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. Know, Civil War battlefield. You know, they were all slain on the spirit all over the town. So it, it, it was exciting. But the, the, thing with, the other thing with this, they all had the same problems, which means that's the demo, devil that's assigned to buffet this thing. They all had divorce, right. marriage problems and divorce, and they all had physical ailments toward the end of their life, mainly with the heart. And there were some other aspects, but the heart thing was a common thing through all of them. Even with Pastor Benny. Yeah. In the last few years, it's public, so I'm not speaking out of turn, but he was in the hospital years ago with a heart issue. I used to tell him, to Benny, Benny, you got this thing, 
And here's how the devil fights it. He fights it in the marriage and with your heart. Watch your marriage and watch your heart. He told Brother Roberts, I said, Benny, but I'm right, Benny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So when you carry a mantle, if, the, if you are elected by God to do that, I think we all want it. Sure. We're not going to get it. Uh, like people say, I've got Catherine Kuhn's mantle. No, you don't. Many does. And we call the mantle over the name of the last person that carried it. Because when you looked at Amy, you call it Edder. When you look at McPherson, you, 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 yeah. so that's why we do It's all the Kuhn thing, but really it's a healing mantle. So when you, when you carry that healing mantle, whoever gets it next, someone's going to get it, hopefully. You better understand how it works, how, how the devil fights it, and, and put more strength in those areas to keep it right so you don't crack. And then watch how it affects your actual family. A lot of their families, all their families, Edder's kids died. Even her daughter died before Edder died. The last living one was, was hit by a trolley car. And oh, wow. Edder buried every child and both husbands before she died. Mm. What the tragedy of the human soul. Amy had three marriages. One that was the right one of the will of God with Robert. And that was one that he died early. And then she married again and again. And the last two were not successful at all. So there's a marriage crisis there. She actually died uh, with physical ailments where she had arthritis in her arms, an intestinal um, problem that she picked up a, a bug someplace in Mexico, they said. And she was on sleeping medication because Amy would not sleep. She would go two or three days without sleeping. And they had a problem because her staff kept resigning because they couldn't keep up with her. Oh, wow. So the board would come to you. I can't. And Di was the same way. And so the board came to Amy like, you got, you're killing your staff. Stop it. She goes, well, I'm awake. I got I, I, I to gotta do something. So they fixed it by hiring two staffs, a night staff and a day staff. So the day staff would end at five or six, and then the new staff would come on at night and work all through the night with Amy. And that's how they solved that problem. But she was on uh, sleeping pills. I have never heard that. I, they had two staffs. Yeah, two staffs. That's, that's all I wanted to keep them. You know, she was, I think she was close to a genius level in her mind. Yeah. Like Dyer was too. There were several genius level generals. I was at Amy's creativity and her mental capacities, like Dowie's, was phenomenal. They would have been successful with whatever they did because they had a great mind. They were genius levels. And, uh, and but they both had problems sleeping. I think sometimes with your, your spirit so active and your mind so active, it's hard to calm them down so your body can sleep. And uh, so that's why they got sick, and, and she got sick, and actually died of accident. So days. is it wrong for us then to pray for a mantle? I don't think you've prayed for it, I, in my opinion. I think it's what you do. Lord, I really like one. Am I available? And, and just be available, be open. I've read all these guys, and I'll take any of the mantles I can get, all right? just sure. say But I don't have. Uh, you have to be honest with yourself, though. You have to be honest, like, I, I really want Catherine Kuhlman's, that's what I wanted. Yep. But I had to be happy knowing the guy that had it. So I was friends with the guy that had it, so I said, okay. But you have to be honest enough with yourself not to assume something or start doing the acting of it. Because I can act like Catherine. I know how to do a Catherine Kuhlman service. I can do the music, I can do the whole thing, and I can do it. But that's putting it on. That's not yeah, real. That's and some people do the copycat, and they can fool people for a while. And there will be miracles in because people's faith will be released in some of those services where it'll give the leniency to it. It kind of feels like that, but it's not the mantle. It is the manufacturing of something, creating a room with worship that, that healing will occur in. That's what they do. The atmosphere. Yeah, the mm -hmm. atmosphere. So I think you can pray. And if God gives it to you, I don't think you announce it. I think like when the prophets, sons of the prophets, saw Elijah come across the, the river, we see the mantle of Elijah. It rests on you. Right. If you have it, it'll be seen. You don't have to announce it. You don't have to say you have it. It'll just be like, no, Benny never has to say he has it. Yeah, that's right. Hello. It's all and he's never, he's never has. Yeah, and, and I think that's a quality of him. Yeah. I think we see it and we say it. Right. And so I think it is wrong to, to it's a wrong motive to go after something. There it's, it is. That's what I just wanted to get to. Not to go after it. I, I, think, I think you'll be available. Right. I can, I'll be available. If there's any chance, Lord, I'm, yeah. I'm willing, please consider me. You probably will not get it, but at least you put yourself in a position of availability. And if you don't get it, can you be okay with it? Yeah. Can you just go ahead and do what God's given you to do and be okay with not having that thing that you wanted just because you want it doesn't mean you'll get it. Well, it gives me the desires of my heart. That's not in your world. 
It's in his world. He manages the mantles. It's true. And he says who has them, who don't have them. I, I know you've en enjoyed what you've heard today from Robert. So you've got, I mean, the shows, we're almost out of time. So let's, let's kind of, as much as we can, wrap up mantles and callings. Understanding there was something that I want to go back to that you made a point of. Is that the, the calling and the mantle is so great that we can make the mistake that we rely on that as a level of our own sp spirituality or our, our closeness to God because look at what God's done through me. I've seen that my life, my whole life. People yeah. in, in positions say, well, you know, I'm obviously right because look what God does. Yeah, that's not true. We had to learn from Brother Brenham yes. that a gift that everybody I've ever interviewed, including his own sons, hundreds of Brenham people, say this, he never missed it in his gifting, but he missed it in his teaching and repositioning himself of how God positioned him. And he, he got off and he died early because of that. So back in those days, people believed his gift was so accurate that everything he said had to be from God. And it's not true. You have to be able to sort all that stuff out because half the people going on today, they need to go back to Bible school and start over. Uh, all right, you want to know more about Robert Slayer and all his books, of course, God's Generals and all those. You got, if you have a lot of stuff at robertslairdon.org? Dot, dot com. Dot com. Org, dot org, yeah. Yeah, so go to that website and find it, you know, and you're about to come out with a new book. Yeah, my Mantle's book will be out next year, probably in the spring. I have a new General's book coming out uh, next year, too. Oh, and who's in this book? This will be more like a revival leaders in the river, like Lonnie Frisbee and Jesus People, Gordon Lindsay and Voice of Heating, kind of putting those people together. Dima Shakir and Full Gospel Businessmen. Some of these great people that need to be talked about that may not be as dominant, but their organizations were phenomenal while they did the revival. So that's what they're going to be out. Okay. All right, thank you for watching today. Can you, can you come back next week for one more? Sure, I'm here. Because I, I want to talk to you about <laughs> this year. I know you all have seen the, the Jesus Revolution movie and all that. I want to dive into Lonnie Frisbee and okay. dive into some of those that you just mentioned that's in your, yeah. your next uh, God's Generals book. I want to encourage you to go to the website, RevivalRadioTV.com, because there you can find all the past programs. I mean, we have years and years worth God has blessed us to be able to continue to have these programs on the Victory Channel mainly, but you find them now all over the world and we're so blessed to be a part. But you can go there, you can scroll through history on the Revival Timeline and understand more about what God's doing. Until next time, remember not only that we love you and Jesus is Lord, remember that stay close to God. Remember the mantles and callings of what you've heard today because we are going to see the greatest revival ever this last great awakening. Don't forget it, we'll see you next time.